block style business memo. All right, we're gonna work on making a memo. Now, the body of the memo, the text I already have here, so that we're not doing a lot of type, so I'm not doing a lot of typing. But I need all of my heading information. I need the word memo. So if you've printed out the, um, the PDF of the memo explaining it, all the different parts, then you'll see what's going to be made here. So the first thing I want to do, we can see we're on the Microsoft default, which is Calibri 11 point normal spacing. And so I want to select everything. So I can either hit Control A on my keyboard, or I can go into this selection bar area, which is on the left of the screen, not on the right. Go over here and triple click, one, two, three, and it selects everything. So I want this to be no spacing style. And I have my no spacing style set with Times New Roman 12 point. It might not be that way on your computer. So um, just go to Times New Roman. Um, if you have to find it all the way down in the T's, you might have to scroll down until you get to the T's. We're going down, down, down. There's a lot of fonts here. Here's Times New Roman. And then we find 12 point. All right. So. I also see that I need a space between these two paragraphs, so I'll put that in there now. But I need to push all of this text down so that I can put my headings up here. So I'm gonna put my show hide on. Remember the button up here. And I'm gonna hit the enter key, I don't know, a couple times. And then I'm going to go up here to the very first line in the document, and I'm gonna type the word memo. And I'm going to, well, I want it to be all caps, and there's a couple of different ways to do that. Um, I could have used the cap locks key on my keyboard. If you look down on your keyboard, you'll see something that probably says caps lock or caps. And that holds all of the, the um, keys in capital letters. So if I put my cap locks on, M-E-M-O, you can see that they stay in cap locks. Let me undo that for a minute. The other way to do that, and which I tend to use more often, is this change case button up here in the fonts grouping. You can see I have a sentence case, lowercase, uppercase, and capitalize each word. Toggle case is pretty specialized and rarely used. So I'm gonna say uppercase. So here I have it in uppercase. I want it to be larger. I'm going to put it at about 18 and I'm going to center it <clears throat> here in my center, in my paragraph groupings area. Now I want to hit the enter key and I'm going to do the headings now. And the headings for a memo are, I have my cap lock still on, two, so I'm going to use my cap locks in, in this case uh, to, and I'm gonna hit the, whoops, hit the tab key, all employees from hmm, tab. Now I'm using the tab key. Now you can see that these two aren't lining up, so I'm gonna have a problem. David Johnson enter enter I'm leaving a blank space between all of the all of the um, oh well when I hit the tab key it went right to this place which is in line with this tab right here so I had to hit the tab key twice because I want everything to line up with David Johnson there and April 12th and I'm gonna hit the enter key and type subject I'm using a colon employee training after each one so I can see up here I need to go back and hit the tab key one more time I can either go to the end of the two word or before the all I'll go right there and hit the tab key so these are all cap this is good but they're not bolded these have to be bold. I like to do my typing first and then I go back and format. So I'm going to 
use bold, I can use it right here. You can see the keyboard shortcut is Control B, but I'm going to bold. I could use bold up here on my keyboard, I mean on my toolbar. I could go here, whoops, let me go right here, and I could do Control B, which bolded it. Oh, now look, when this became bold, it pushed my date too far out. So I have to get rid of one of those tab keys. So I'll either go here or here, it doesn't matter which, and just backspace one of those out. And my last one is subject. All right, so my headings are all bold. I'm gonna turn my show height off for a minute. Yes, they're all lined up, memo is large, bold and capitalized just for the headings, not for the information with the headings. All right. Now, I want a line to separate my headings from the body of the text. There's a couple of different ways to do that, but let me show you, well, let me show you both of them. What I could do, and what I tend to do, because in newer versions we have this horizontal line that's available. If you're using an older word processing program, you're going to use a border. But let's show this. So I have three blank spaces here, one above and one below, and I'm going to use the one in the middle. And I'm going to choose from my borders uh, dialog, well, borders choices in the paragraph grouping, this thing called horizontal line. And it's a gray line, it's not as dark as a border, and that's fine. So when I turn my show height off, it makes a nice horizontal line there. Now, if I have an older word processing program, this isn't something that you can do. So what you can do is go to, <clears throat> pardon me, the blank line below the last heading and choose bottom border. And that puts a border all the way between margins. Here's the left margin, here's the right margin. So so now we have a border between the headings and the body of the letter. And we've used our change case, we've used fonts and sizes, our bold. Now let's use um, italicize and underline. Now underline is different than a border. Okay? If I underline something, let me just choose this whole line and underline, it only underlines text. So I can't use underline in a blank space. Let me make a blank space down here. And underline that blank space. Nothing will happen. It's underlined, but nothing will happen until I start typing. And then the, type, the text is underlined. So underline and borders are slightly different. Let me undo that. It's a toggle switch on and off. All right, so let's italicize the word, italicize and bold, August 6th. So I'm going to select just August 6th, and I can use, when I choose this, you see the little shortcut bar comes up. So I can use bold and italicize here. I tend not to use it just because it's a newer feature and I'm not quite used to it yet. Um, but I'll do italicize and bold, okay? Let's underline standard rate. Where's my little toolbar? I'll underline it. Or I can go up here and underline it. Okay. And then we have some other features, font styles up here. We have strike through, which actually draws a line through. So let me select employees. And when I do that, you can see it puts a line through it. And then we have superscript and subscript here. Superscript, subscript. Superscript goes above the line, so let me superscript the word employees here. You can see it becomes higher. And subscript, it goes below the line. And let me turn that off and turn that off. You can see their toggles on and off, on and off. All right, so what are we missing here? We're only missing the typist's initials. So if David Johnson had typed this letter himself, there would no, be no need for the typist's initials. But since he gave it to somebody else to type, we need the typist's initials down here. 
So I put the type of initials in there. Now when I hit the space bar or the enter key, it will try to capitalize that. So I have to go back and enforce the change or turn off my feature in Word that capitalizes every letter, every new sentence. But I, I prefer to have that on. All right, now let's print this out. We remember, we go under the File tab, and we can decide how many copies we want. I don't know how many all of all employees are. Maybe there's 12 or 13. Um, in a, nowadays in an office, this would probably be sent via email, but sometimes you need a paper trail. So you decide how many, and then you would hit Print and then let's save this. We haven't saved it yet, so it doesn't matter whether we hit Save or Save As. The Save As dialog box will come up here. And we decide where to save it. I don't know, I'll just save it to my desktop for now and then I can delete it later. Uh, memo Practice. So it took the first word that it found in the document, which was Memo, and that's fine. Sometimes it's the date and some people like to name all of their files with dates. All right, so I'm going to hit save and this will save up here. And so now I know it's saved. Okay, so play around with some borders. See what you like there. Um, your alignment is right here and your font styles and features. So I encourage you to get in there, play around with any of the, the features that you want to have fun with. This is a 2010, this text effect. It is on only the newest version of Word. So you can play with that and see what, see what that does. There's so many things to, there's so many ways to make things look interesting in this program. So you just need to get in there and start playing around with it. The last thing I want to mention is the CC part of a memo. Now we saw it in and you learned a little bit about it in the business letter, but occasionally a CC, which means carbon copy, might go to another person. And usually when it's sent to another person, everyone knows who it was sent to. So we can put a CC line on here. So I went to the end of subject, went to the end of the subject line and hit the enter key. And I would put CC colon and then I would um, say who it's being CC'd to, Emily Johnson or something. Oh no, that's the same name as above. It doesn't matter. And I would make it just the same as the other heading, which means all caps and bold. I would line it up. So in if more than one person, I would put a comma and put Chris Williams or something like that. So that's the CC line. Um, there, those are the basic, the first four are the basic lines that should be included in every memo. And this is a courtesy um, if it's going to specifically to, for example, another manager in another department or someone who um, might not be part of the all employees. All right, CC, carbon copy.